In this film, we're finding out how milk is produced and processed, ready for you to drink or to eat as cheese. This is Balamoda Moor, a farm in the south of the Isle of Man with 140 cows. The 350 acres of lush pasture on the farm are used for grazing and producing silage and barley for the cows to eat. I met Belinda Cool, who farms here. I've lived on a farm for most of my life. I was brought up on a farm and when I married Dougie 21 years ago, we moved here. The farm isn't just somewhere where we work. It's where we've always lived and brought up the family. It's a way of life, really. A cow's day consists of lying round in the fields, chewing the cud, standing up, eating plenty of fresh grass, enjoying the view, the mountains, the sea, Pretty good life, really. We have some calves at the moment. The youngest ones are kept in individual pens for a few days and then they're moved into a group. Cow gives birth to the calf. This starts off the lactation process, meaning the udder produces milk. This continues for the next nine months then she has three months off before she has the next calf and starts the process all over again. A cow has four stomachs, which help it to digest the grass it eats. Grass is tough stuff to process, so one munch isn't enough. The grass goes into the first stomach, comes back up again for chewing a second time, this is called chewing the cud, then travels on again to the second stomach and so on until it reaches the fourth and final stomach and the job is done. All this processing means the milk that comes from a cow is particularly special. The cows get milked twice a day. In the morning, about seven o'clock when I get up and in the evening. We don't milk by hand these days. We have machines to help us. Firstly, the cows come in from the fields. They wait in the collecting pen. They file into the milking parlour and their numbers are punched into the computer which allocates their feed. Then, we disinfect their teeth and check for problems. After that, we attach the milking unit. Then we moisturise the teats and the cows leave. Every day the milk gets collected by the Isle of Man creameries. This is Glyn. He works for Isle of Man Creameries and collects the milk from Balamoda Moor each day. He attaches the pipe to the refrigeration tank next to the dairy, takes a sample, which will be quality tested before the milk is unloaded back at the creamery, and fills out the paperwork. It only takes a few minutes to transfer the milk into the tanker, so Glenn uncouples the pipe, puts the sample safely back in the truck, and he's ready to go. Andy Thornton, the manufacturing manager of Isle of Man Creameries, is already waiting for us. The milk, when it arrives at the creamery, will be tested to make sure it meets uh, quality standards. It'll then be pumped into our raw milk storage silos where it's held at uh, less than 4 degrees C. When we're making cheese, uh, the raw milk will be emptied from the raw milk silos through a pasteurisation process to make sure the food is safe for consumption. Um, it'll then be put into a, a cheese make vat um, where rennet, 
enzyme rennet will be added to the make as well as a bacterial culture. That will then form the milk into curds and whey. When the curds and whey have been formed, it will be emptied onto a draining table, which allows for the separation of the curds and the whey. When the curd is left on its own, it will be then transported by blowing it with air across into the cheese block formers, where the curd is then reformed back into 20 kilo blocks. Uh, we, do, we do a very nice range of uh, added ingredient cheeses. My personal favourite is the black peppercorn. Um, what we do is we, we'll listen to our customers and the consumers and uh, they'll give us an idea of what additives we, we need to be putting in our cheese moving forward. We'll then shred a 20 kilogram block of mature cheddar, add in the various ingredients, reform that back into a, a 20 kilogram block which will then be sent to our cutting line and packed into the retail uh, packs that you see on the supermarket shelves. When we're packaging the milk, again the, milk, the raw milk will be emptied from the raw milk silo, it will go through a pasteurisation process again, it will then be pumped into three storage tanks, one for the semi-skim milk, one for the skim milk and one for the whole milk. Um, these uh, modified milks have had a certain amount of cream taken out of them to meet the fat content required. That cream will be used for potting, for, uh, for fresh cream. Any excess cream will be made into butter. Um, the milks, once they've been put into the holding tanks for the milk, it will be then emptied down to the various filling lines and packed into one pint cartons, two pint bottles or four pint bottles. The most uh, environmentally friendly packaging that we use on liquid milks would be the milk carton. It's a cardboard carton. Um, we can bring it in in very large quantities which reduces um, the amount of transportation uh, required to bring those products to the island. The plastic bottles are less environmentally friendly. They're brought, it, brought in already, um, already blown into a bottle shape. Um, obviously they're not a degradable uh, product as yet and also it requires a higher volume of transportation space to get them onto the island. My favourite cheesy meal would have to be uh, black peppercorn cheese um, melted over a very nice fillet steak. The milk is packed off to shops or delivered to your doorstep and the cheese will be distributed across the Isle of Man, throughout Britain and around the world.